Visual effects can bring our wildest imaginations to life, now more than ever. In fact, it almost feels like it's easy. Except recently, I saw a shot that blew my mind. No, it's not the dino. We've been able to do dinosaurs for like 30 years now. No, it was the water caustics on his back. The way light concentrates into these patterns of light is something we actually see every single day, but is actually one of the hardest things to do in all of CGI. That's why in this video, we're gonna be diving deep into how caustics work and why everything is a lie. Holy crap, did I just nail it? Actually, what is the definition of the word caustic? Definition says, able to burn or corrode organic, okay, that can't possibly be it. Sarcastic in a scathing and bitter way. I don't think that's also it. <laughs> that was stupid and a waste of time. A caustic is essentially the concentrated patterns of light you get after the light passes through stuff like glass. You see them all the time and you probably don't even realize. Look at that caustic. Oh, what? Look at that caustic right there. <laughs> There are lots of other examples in movies and shows throughout the years. It makes for a very cool looking set. Caustics are a physical phenomenon, which means that they can be simulated. Now, simulation tools have gotten better, faster, and easier to use over time. We can pretty much simulate most things. You know, we got smoke and fire, we got liquid water simulations, we got ragdoll physics, rigid body dynamics. However, it's easy to forget the most common thing that artists simulate, light. Because rendering engines literally simulate how light interacts with the environment and the world. There's a bunch of different rendering engines out there and all of them handle light rendering a little bit differently. The way light works in reality is pretty straightforward. A light source emits photons that bounce around an environment before landing in your eyeballs or camera. The brightness and color of these photons are directly changed by the materials they bounce off of, so when they eventually land in your eyes, they form an image. Rendering engines try to replicate this concept by tracing the paths of those photons, but instead of measuring them from the light source to the camera, they are usually traced in reverse, from the camera back to the original light source. If a ray makes it all the way to the light, then you get the color and brightness information for any given pixel, and this is called path tracing. If the light simulation was not limited in this way, then the computer would attempt to simulate the infinite number of light rays and bounces that propagate in reality, which would literally take forever. So if caustics are just a phenomenon of light, then I should be able to render it, right? Okay, time to render some caustics. Let's do this. I just made a simple little scene here. Got a donut, got a cylinder, got a little blobby sphere. I have them coming out of the ground here. Look at this, bloop, 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 bloop. So, I'm gonna see if I can get these to render caustics. I've got it rendering out to 16,000 samples right now. We're getting something. We're getting something. We're getting some caustics. Why is this taking forever? A little longer than a few minutes later. Oh my god, it's still nowhere close to finishing. Why is this taking forever? I give up. I don't get it. Why are caustics so hard to render? Caustics have been you know. Oh yeah, this is Jules Urbach, the founder and CEO of Otoy, which is responsible for Octane Render, my favorite render engine. Caustics is an art form. It's been something you, people avoided caustics that they used to avoid, you know, skid. There is a reason why caustics are difficult, and that's because you're, you know, when you're doing typical rendering, if you think of, of light like water, you're trying to catch a bucket of light and you cast a wide net, and ultimately you get a result that's averaged out and it's maybe a little noisy, but it works. If you're trying to render something like a laser or something through a magnifying glass, all that light, think of it being sort of like put through a complex nozzle and all of a sudden those paths individually need to be traced. You know, that's where caustics become really hard. In order to just, you know, 
follow sort of the rules of physics and light. If you do sample things, you know, caustics are the things that you need a lot more samples to get the actual result. You just have to calculate a lot more individual photons versus just approximating an average of how light spreads throughout a scene. And, you know, it's it, it's one of the more expensive parts of the red ring equation. You know, you can, you can fake it, just put a gobo right in front of a light and call back caustics. Fake it with gobos. Okay, great. What's a gobo? A gobo is a type of screen that you actually put in front of a spotlight to project a shaped shadow of something like, say, blinds or ferns or trees, leaves, that sort of thing. And since that is something I can do practically, I can replicate it digitally as well. Instead of using, say, ferns or blinds or whatever random shapes you have, you can substitute any sort of black and white image in that you want, or perhaps caustics. And you can take that another step further by using an actual texture image sequence, a video file. You can literally record footage of the caustics at the bottom of a pool, clamp it down into a black and white image. That can now be our projected light shape. It just happens to look like real caustics. If you were to simulate that for real with an actual surface of water, the light has to then bend the correct way, and that takes so much longer to calculate. It's the same exact principle of using a real gobo, but it's so much cheaper to render. This is generally the way it's done across the board in visual effects because doing it for real kind of just is not an option. It takes too long. So now I'm wondering if I can replicate that shot from Prehistoric Planet by using fake gobos. If you remember the Jurassic Park video we did last fall, we have a nice high quality 3D model of a T-Rex. And these are the results. Look at the patterns of light on the T-Rex's back and how it actually falls off the same way it does in Prehistoric Planet. I'm now convinced that this is exactly how they did it in Prehistoric Planet. All of these caustics are probably the result of gobos. But I'm not satisfied faking these caustics with gobos. I want to do them for real. And luckily, there's a brand new render kernel called Photon Tracer. It turns out that there's you know, more sophisticated ways of rendering caustics, and that's what the Photon Tracer does. It's doing it in a way that gets you to the results that would take a million times longer faster. It is dressed with photon mapping, with path guiding, with all these things, and you end up with something that solves all these problems, no compromises, full speed, full quality. It's not, it's instantaneous. I mean, but it's really fast, like a thousand times faster. If you turn that off and you switch to, to path tracing, it's not gonna look any different if you let it go all the way to the same number of samples. And that's the magic of it. So now that I feel that I can actually correctly simulate caustics in a renderer, I wanna put them to the test by comparing them to what I can film in real life. These are like the classic kinds of caustics, and if you're using the sunlight, something like this is actually strong enough to catch things on fire. It starts getting... Oh my god, it's already starting to burn. Fire! 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 This bee's already dead. This, this bee is already... Oh god. Oh god. Dude, I want to have freaking spots in my eyes now. Don't. Ow! Ren! Dude, you saw how quick that was? You know that's hot. Dude. I know it's hot, but I just wanted to feel it. <laughs> If you have a VR headset, this is exactly why you should not put it down with the lenses facing up because the sun will literally melt the screen. So I got the idea to try to actually replicate moving the magnifying glass in real life so that I can replicate it digitally to see if the caustics match up. To do so, I'm literally going to use my phone as a motion capture device, literally tracking the position and rotation of this magnifying glass here. Do the rendered caustics match the real caustics? We'll find out here in a moment. Oh, I want to take a quick break from all of this rendering talk to tell you about our sponsor, Squarespace. You know what's nice about Squarespace? You don't have to know anything about making a website because they've got so many award-winning templates right for you right now. If you're running a business, it's imperative you know all of the analytics and data through point through your website. And guess what? Squarespace gives you all of that control and all of the data you could possibly want at your fingertips, ready to go. And if you want to take that a step further with multiple contributors, you can have multiple different people contributing to your website, all with different permissions set by you. Also, I understand having to post across multiple different social media accounts. Well, guess what? You post your website, it'll automatically post to all of your social media accounts all at once. And I know what you might be thinking. If Squarespace is making my website, do they own the website? No! Everything you put out, you own. You know that for a fact. If you got videos that you want to put on your website, you can optimize the loading speeds of all of it by using their video block system to make sure that everything loads exactly when it's needed. Why do I do hand gestures? I cannot talk without my hands. Anyway, thanks again to Squarespace for sponsoring the show. They've been our sponsors for a very long time, and I always appreciate the OGs in the sponsor space. So if you want to start your own website, whether it's for starting your own business or sharing your artwork, head to squarespace.com slash corridor crew, and you will get 10% off your first 
website or domain. Now for some caustics. But here's the thing, I can't replicate this magnifying glass unless I actually replicate the properties of the glass itself. Index of refraction, dispersion, these are things that I need to put into the material in order to actually get the same type of caustic. And lo and behold, I'm actually replicating the real caustics pretty accurately. There's some small differences here, probably because I didn't model the lens exactly the same, but I mean, this is pretty close, especially when you see when I move the magnifying glass forward and back like that, the way the light inverts. That is pretty interesting, the fact that I was able to replicate that for real. Man, this has inspired me. Now that I know that caustics are literally as easy as hitting the check mark on the renderer, it's like, I kind of want to go crazy. What sort of caustics can I make? So I've become obsessed. I have started rendering out a bunch of different examples, just having fun with it. It's super easy to set up caustics, but there's still a problem. Caustics are still very slow to render. This one shot right here took 100 hours to render at 720p. It took 100 hours to render on a computer with a 3090 in it. That's a long time to render. But think about it this way. If I wasn't using this, it would have taken 100,000 hours to render. How long is that? Hey Siri, 100,000 hours in years. 100,000 hours is 11.41 years. I guess uh, 100 hours isn't that bad. <laughs> but I cannot stop thinking about that prehistoric planet shot. Like, I feel like I can probably now actually simulate those caustics for real, and that will give us an opportunity to directly compare the gobo caustics to the real physically simulated caustics. And this might actually show us whether it's worth it to simulate those caustics for real now. So check this out, I've got X particles, it's great, and they have a super simple ocean surface thing. Technically this ocean surface is not simulated, it's based off of a noise map, but the light passing through it is simulated, so I'm gonna call this real. I mean, look at that! It's real, it's real! I'm actually simulating real caustics on the back of a dinosaur! I feel like I achieved something here. Now let's actually compare the results. Right away, I think the first thing I notice is that the fake caustics are a little too consistent. If we ignore the scale here for a moment, I think the simulated caustics have a slightly different fall off. Look at the intensity of the light at the brightest points on each image. Notice how on the simulated caustics, the light actually has this nice fall off. It feels a little bit more natural compared to say the gobo where it's kind of just the same intensity everywhere. But you know what? The results are pretty similar. <laughs> Like, it's cool that these are physically simulated, and it does technically look a little bit more real to me, but is it worth it? I'm not so sure. Especially when you're able to kick out like a hundred more shots than you would be to simulate it for real. So yeah, it turns out there's not really too much difference between fake caustics and simulated caustics. I mean, yes, the simulated ones are a little nicer in my eye. It's just that the difference is so negligible, it's not really even worth worrying about. So much so, in fact, that we actually applied this principle in real life. I literally took the exact same texture sequence I've been using to make all of these fake caustics, but I put it in a real projector that we used to project caustics onto me for the opening shot of this video. So that opening shot has real caustics? Fake caustics? Does it matter? I keep using this term fake, but Think about it, all visual effects, all CGI, it's all fake. I mean, think about reality. You have an infinite number of light bounces going around a scene, infinite number of substeps for all of the simulations you see around you. All of the textures are super high resolution, everything is HDR, and it all runs in real time without ever crashing. Visual effects, it's all a trick. None of it's real. There's always some degree of craftsmanship that is creating something for us to live in for a brief moment in time, to escape reality, to suspend our disbelief. And as long as the tricks we employ get us there, it doesn't matter how we got there. So now that you've made it to the end of this video and you've learned everything that I hope you've learned from this randomly super nerdy esoteric niche CGI video, I want you to start considering the trailer of Avatar 2. Are the caustics in that movie faked, like I've described, 
Or did Weta go beyond and above what is necessary by physically and accurately simulating how light works for a movie that takes place almost entirely underwater? When you eventually get to check out this movie, I want this to be on your mind. Are the caustics physically simulated? If we can actually get Weta to make a statement about the caustics in the movie, that would be even better. That'd be so cool. If you have any ideas for other sort of like randomly niche CGI things that I can maybe dive into and really get the whole picture about it, let me know in a comment down below and maybe that'll be an upcoming video.